Hello, my name is Laura Clark and I'm a visual artist, collaborative printmaker, filmmaker, educator and currently a research technician in print technologies at the Centre for Fine Print Research. Welcome to my talk, where I will look back at a few projects I have worked on in my own practice, as well as collaboratively with other artists. The projects I've selected are ones where the nature of traditional print has been challenged and boundaries of the traditional have been crossed, manipulated or transgressed, sometimes in scale, through animation or sculpturally to create hybrid prints. I discovered traditional print as an art student when I was 19 and instantly fell in love. Traditional printmaking is not straightforward. In fact, it takes a person with a backward, upside down, inverted way of thinking to truly trust the process and make it work for them. Often it's incredibly labour intensive and takes a great deal of preparation. And in some cases, it can take months and months and many, many state changes before a final print is pulled. It's not until the final print is pulled that the printmaker will know what their work will look like even if you've been with the process the entire time. It's magic, it's alchemy, and it's full of surprises. It requires trust and also a little surrender. My connection with traditional print is incredibly visceral. The smell of the inks, the cool touch of the metal or the stone, the physical labour involved in pulling prints, and then the mental discipline it takes to then print an edition more and more of the same print. The challenge to have every print completely identical is something I obsess over and gives me so much satisfaction. I studied fine art printmaking at the Royal College of Art, where I was able to print pretty much day and night for two years. I was extremely focused in the beginning with learning the core traditional processes etching, lithography, screen print, and wood engraving, treating it almost like an apprenticeship. I was also determined to learn how to edition. The first term, I cared very little about the conceptual meanings behind the work and more for actually acquiring mastery and understanding over the process. The act of physically printing became addictive and I would often return home with blisters on my thumbs from printing so much. This photograph is actually ink and not blisters, fortunately. It took a while for me before I could step back and think, right, I have an understanding of the rules now. How could I break them and, and challenge them? And it was then I began to develop myself as an artist and discover what makes me tick conceptually. And also to explore what print was as more than just the technical skills that I'd acquired. My work explores the subconscious, the repressed, and the idea of a departure from what it means to be human. I'm very interested in the psychoanalytic theories revolving around the origins of desire, sexuality, and power, exploring stereotypes, gender roles, the uncanny, the macabre, bestiality, and hybrids. I often work with theatrical imagery that has erotic and fantastical overtones. So I started to pull away from what I thought of as traditional print, uh, as works on paper, and began making films and sculptures. This is a bronze edition cast of a pig's trotter, entitled Childhood Transgression. It's an autobiographical piece based on a horrifying childhood memory of finding what I thought was a severed hand in a graveyard, only to be told by police it was a pig's trotter. And this really ties into my interest between what it means to be animal and, and human and that crossover between the two. I made many prints or casts of these and editioned them, and then I exhibited them in various domestic settings. So these are stills from a film I made called Studies of the Human, where I took video footage documenting various movements set up like the photographer Mybridge in front of a stark black and white background. 
the movements portray a cast of animal human characters doing things like rocking a baby, eating, traveling on all fours and playing with a doll. I then cut up the video footage and turned the stills into lithograph prints and then put them back together to create an animation. So you can see here the halftone dot that's had to be applied in order to turn those still photographs into uh, a lithograph. And I really like this grainy quality uh, to the image and it, it gives away that the lithography is part of the, the process, which I really like. So I took the techniques that I'd use to uh, create the still images for studies of the human and created this large four plate etching entitled Leda. When I was planning on making the work Leda, I was exploring this idea of the uncomfortable nature of the union between animal and human, something explored and often romanticised in mythologies. The seduction of the viewer is important to me, and I wanted the viewer to be sucked in, to be made to feel uncomfortable, not only by the subject matter, but also an uneasiness with the process. The print had to be larger than life. I wanted it to be an etching, but it had to be bigger than any etching, a print that could not easily be contained, displaying the bestial couplings crudely through large half tones, stripped back, and like the subject matter, a hybrid. The image was made from photo manipulation from a lithograph into Photoshop, and then screen printed in a sign-based enamel onto four steel plates etched in nitric acid then for an hour. Each plate was then printed one by one, each plate taking three hours to ink up, with ink I made myself through ground up pigments, before being tiled together to create the final print. The steel is incredible, it has its own aquatint, and when etched for a certain amount of time, it's able to hold on to the, the black ink, creating a depth and a richness akin to mezzotint. But if you etch the plate for too long, then this could lead to the enamel being stripped off. So there was always a feeling of taboo with this method, combining etching and screen print. And there was a fear that the process would turn its back on me and strip my image off completely. Or, you know, hopefully it would cooperate. Luckily for me, it did cooperate. Uh, this is the, the print later exhibited at an exhibition called The Freaks in Shoreditch Town Hall basement. So I use this technique again in my work specimens, uh, this time taking extremely high resolution scans of body parts and objects and applying, applying a crude half tone dot that could then be screen printed with enamel over two steel plates and then etching that image permanently into the steel plate. With specimens, the idea was to make each figure look exposed and vulnerable, almost as if the figures were under the knife on a butcher's table, allowing the viewer to scrutinise these grotesque bodies. This is them exhibited at the Freaks exhibition in Shoreditch Town Hall basement. So in 2012, I was awarded a fellowship at the Royal Academy Schools where I became part of the RA's print publishing programme. It was here I began working collaboratively with Royal Academicians and printing editions for them. I got to make plates and edition work for Grayson Perry, Cathy Pilkington, Mark Hampson and Gula Ates, and played a large role in setting up photo etching there, which is something that influenced some of my work to follow. These are two plates printed uh, on photopolymer plates for the artist Mark Hampson, one printed in magenta and the other in cyan. And I started to use the photopolymer plates in my own work. So these pieces were from a series called That's the Way to Do It. And they're exploring the characters in uh, the Punch and Judy uh, puppet show. So both of these plates were uh, photopolymer plates 
and then a second plate is printed uh, that has monoprint uh, colour underneath. So you have Judy and Punch. And then this is Crocodile. So it was around this time as well that I started to work more with the artist Marilyn Oliver. Marilyn is a multidisciplinary artist and a trained printmaker and is now assistant professor of printmaking at the University of Alberta in Canada. Her work straddles the digital and the physical and she often uses CT scans of human bodies to explore her ideas of something she calls post-humanisation in her work. She manages to fuse traditional manual skills such as wood carving, fishnet making and weaving with traditional printmaking such as screen printing and digital mechanisation such as laser cutting, CNC machining and rapid prototyping. This is a piece called Dreamcatcher and it's a piece I was very lucky to work on with her first as a student in 2009 and then again in 2013. Each piece or each slice you can see is taken from a CT scan of the artist, laid out and then laser cut on acrylic. Marilyn and I weave the insides of each individual piece as a dream catcher and attached ostrich feathers painstakingly with fishing wire. The sculpture was assembled piece by piece, suspended from a sheet of acrylic to make it appear as though it's floating above a bed of feathers. The work is additioned, so it then became my job to install them in galleries or buyers' homes every time she sold one. They're truly breathtaking and absolutely painstaking to install. This is Dreamcatcher installed at the Royal Academy uh, Summer Exhibition. So, Working with Marilyn and other sculptors like Kate Maguire encouraged me to start thinking of print in three-dimensional terms. I became very interested in some of the etching plates I'd been working on at the time for an exhibition called The Cadaver Room, becoming sculptural somehow. I became very interested in the nets of the shapes, ways of taking something that's two-dimensional and fitting it together to create a three-dimensional shape. I started to look at polyhedral shapes with multiple sides or facets like cuboctahedrons, dodecahedrons and isosahedrons. And it was very important to me that each image on the plate had a relationship with the other at their points of intersection and in that way creating a whole when assembled as a potential three-dimensional image. I took inspiration from the surrealist game Exquisite Corpse, a collaborative drawing approach used by artists to create a bizarre and intuitive images and created net. So here is me assembling uh, 14 plates, a 14 plate net into a very large etching press to create the print Unravel Cadaver. So this piece of work Unravel Cadaver offers an ordered dissection of the sculpture and uh, it was really important to, to print this before it became the sculpture because of course once it becomes a sculpture you can't print from it anymore. So these individual plates then come together to create the sculpture Exquisite Corpse which is a 14 sided sphere made of squares and triangles and the shape itself is a um, cube octahedron and the boundaries of each facet divide one body from the other at their parts of intersection. So the images themselves are scans of various body parts, animal and human, as well as objects like dolls' hands, glass eyes, shells and feathers. And where they meet together, they create this, this one body. So I created another sculpture for an exhibition I had called The Last Breath, where this time I used the hard, cold edges of aluminium in contrast with soft, gooey octopus tentacles etched into a surface. So here you can see mock-ups in my studio. So I scanned in the octopus tentacles at very high resolution and the images were photographic, so each plate had to be coated in a photosensitive emulsion before being exposed, developed and then etched. 
Here you can see one of the aluminium plates of Octopoda being etched in a mordant made from copper, sulfate, crystals and salt. It's an incredibly messy and volatile way of etching and I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> as when the aluminium is placed in the bath it creates a positive charge so you're basically making battery acid, you're etching in battery acid and it's really really quick. The crud that comes off the aluminium has to be scraped off the surface so it's basically accelerated rusting, you're scraping off thick layers of rust from the surface of the aluminium. And then the plates had to be inked up with a mixture of etching ink and polyurethane varnish and then lacquered before being riveted together to create the sculpture. This large eight-sided aluminium sculpture, Octopoda, and the 14-sided sculpture, Exquisite Corpse, are displayed suspended from fishing wire to give them a weightless quality and allow them to spin, offering the viewer a display of all the facets. There is a conflict between the flat surface and the full three dimensions on the image that's slightly unnerving, and I think this is what make, makes the pieces work. So for the last eight years, I've been working as a tutor at City and Guilds Art School and also I've been teaching workshops and master classes at print fairs and festivals. This is incredibly valuable to me because it allows me to continue to learn and develop as a printmaker through problem solving, material exploration and research, particularly when I'm working with someone who doesn't necessarily come from a print background. When working at City and Guilds, I had the opportunity to work with a sculpture student who wanted to use ceramics in conjunction with intaglio etching. We managed to source some porcelain paper for the project. Plates were made where the textures and delicate laces were pressed into a soft ground, which was then etched and printed onto the porcelain paper. This was then manipulated into a shape and then fired in a kiln to create delicate and brittle forms, fooling the viewer and giving an illusion of softness within their forms, whilst inviting the viewer to question their solidity. I think, as a printmaker, it's always important to challenge what print actually is, what constitutes as a print. I think one key to great printmaking is to know which rules to break, and despite the rules you have to keep, still feel as though you can play and not be restricted. As an artist printmaker, I defend printmaking based on a system of its own values, such as technique and process, which still offer today many possibilities for innovation and transgression. The work shown here had to be print. They could be nothing but print. And that demonstrates just a small example of how versatile print can be. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. And I welcome any questions. Um, you can direct them to me via email. Um, take a look at my website for, for more films and more prints that I've made. And uh, follow me on Instagram for, for updates of work that I'm doing with CFPR and updates of work uh, in my own practice, in my own studio. Thank you very much for listening.